tonight is a community service of the New York Institute of Technology. Covering the news of Nassau and Suffolk County's Long Island News Tonight with Ken Eckhart, Carol Pack, and the award-winning L.I. News Team. Good evening. I'm Ken Eckhart, and here's what's happening. The New York State budget could be finalized by legislators this week, in time for the state's fiscal year to begin on Friday. It would be the first on-time budget in several years. The tentative $132.5 billion plan would reduce state spending by more than 2 percent and would address a $10 billion deficit without raising taxes or borrowing money. We asked Long Islanders what they think about the proposed deal. As a retired guidance counselor and a former teacher, um, the last few months of hearing the dread and uh, layoffs and layoffs and layoffs, the morale in schools is terrible. Unfortunately, it's something we have to do. New York State needs a balanced budget, and I think the cuts have to be spread evenly across the board. One Long Islander who told, works in a nursing home says she's not happy with cuts at health care for the elderly. I think it's really, really sad that at the end of your life or near the end of your life, you have to suffer that much more. I thought that the politicians are not very sensitive to people that really don't have a lot of money. Governor Andrew Cuomo and legislative leaders struck the budget deal yesterday, and it's now up to rank and file lawmakers to approve it. New York has the earliest budget deadline in the nation and like other states, is wrestling with deep deficits, weak revenues, and protests from advocates for the poor and middle class. A Uniondale man has been arrested and charged with leaving the scene of an accident that sent the victim to the hospital in serious condition. Police say 25-year-old Jamal Mabry of Uniondale was driving on Sunrise Highway in Rockville Center yesterday when he struck a pedestrian, then fled the scene. The victim was admitted to a nearby hospital in serious condition. Subsequent investigation led to the arrest of Mabry, charged with leaving the scene. And a teacher's aide at a school in Seaford has been charged with showing a sexually explicit video to a student. Nassau County Police say 29-year-old Tanya Thompson of Rockville Center is an aide at a Seaford Boses school. On Friday, police say she displayed a sexually explicit video from her cell phone to a 13-year-old male student. Thompson was arrested and charged with endangering the welfare of a child. Suffolk County Police are investigating a residential fire that claimed the life of a resident. The fire was reported at a home on Wilson Boulevard in Islip, where a detached garage had been converted into an apartment. Police say a neighbor reportedly called 911 to report the fire in the garage apartment early yesterday morning. The Islip Fire Department responded, and they say after they got into the apartment, they found 46-year-old Dory Costa near a side door. She was taken to a nearby hospital where she was pronounced dead Police say a preliminary investigation indicates the cause of the fire is not suspicious. One of the original Tuskegee Airmen was honored recently at the Cradle of Aviation Museum in Garden City. Ed Monroe of Freeport earned his place in history as a World War II hero, and he told a group of junior high school students to believe in the power of education. Monroe urged students to stay in school in order to build a better future. You don't only have to be polished. Whatever you, or whatever endeavor that you find yourself interested in, be the best. Be the best. Work hard so that you can be the best. The historical significance of the Tuskegee Airmen inspired recording artist Whatever to rap about the brave hero's struggles in his song, Roger That. For the victories, for the sweat, for the tears in the blood stains. Red Tails, P-51 Mustangs, yeah. For every soldier on the battlefield, freedom fighting for a cause, yeah. That's for real, brave hearts with the skills, heart is still. Well, whatever says he grew up learning about the Tuskegee Airmen and is inspired by their courage. He told the students they all have talents that they simply need to tap into. 
And Monroe advised the youngsters to never give up on themselves or their education. Nassau County police say a man being arrested on drug charges ended up dead after apparently swallowing the drugs during the arrest. Police say officers saw the suspect in a possible drug transaction in Uniondale early yesterday morning and began following him. They say the suspect, 43-year-old Benjamin Jackson, got out of the car and tried to hide in some bushes on Planders Avenue. And when they approached him, they say he ingested the narcotics. Jackson went into cardiac arrest before the ambulance arrived. Officers were able to regain a pulse, but he was pronounced dead a short time later at a nearby hospital. Police are awaiting a medical examiner's report on the cause of death. Where after spending much of the day up today, stocks closed lower this afternoon. The Dow finished the day down about 22 and a half points. NASDAQ was down over 12 and a third points, and the S&P finished down just over three and a half points. NYIT's LI News Tonight continues after this. See a screening of the film Rebel Without a Cause at New York Institute of Technology's D. Sibersky Center in Old Westbury on Wednesday, April 6th at 5.30 p.m. For more information, call 516-686-7567. Looking for a place to live? The Long Island Housing and Rental Expo will be held at the Islandia Marriott on Saturday, April 9th from 10 a.m. till 3 p.m. For more information, call Action Long Island at 631-425-2700. The Gilbert and Sullivan Light Opera Company of Long Island and South Shore Syncopators celebrate the music of the 20s and 30s at the Ethical Humanist Society in Garden City on Saturday, April 9th at 8 p.m. For tickets, call 516-795-7745 or cast a line at the Spring Family Fishing Festival at Belmont Lake State Park in North Babylon on Saturday, April 9th from 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. For more information, call 631-444-0283. If you have an event you'd like included on the LI News Tonight community calendar, send it to Tonight at nyit.edu. Press play to start your future. Learn the industry. Use the technology. Become an expert in television reporting. Journalism. Radio. Digital film. Public relations and advertising. Television production, digital graphics, a beautiful state-of-the-art campus, a road to the job you've always wanted, in the media capital of the world. Communication Arts at NYIT. When can you start? Some of today's world headlines, officials in Japan say radiation from a damaged nuclear power plant is spreading to seawater and soil. Workers are trying to pump out the contaminated water that's inside several buildings at the nuclear complex. They say the water must be removed before operators try to restart the crippled cooling system. One expert says it could take weeks to clear out the radioactive water. New readings show contamination in the ocean has spread about a mile farther north of the nuclear site than before. NATO's commander for Libya disputes suggestions that international air strikes against Muammar Gaddafi's forces are essentially providing air cover for advancing rebels, insisting instead that NATO's mission is purely designed to protect civilians. A Canadian general said today that the military alliance was in the process of taking over command from the U.S.-led operation after NATO's 28 members agreed to the transition yesterday. The move effectively means NATO could bomb Gaddafi's forces if they're threatening to harm civilian populations. To date, international airstrikes have crippled Gaddafi's forces, allowing rebels to advance after seemingly being on the brink of defeat. 
and the Israeli government is demanding that Facebook remove a page calling on Palestinians to take up arms against Israel. The page, entitled Third Palestinian Intifada, has more than 340,000 fans. The page features a fist in the colors of the Palestinian flag and calls on Palestinians to take to the streets after Friday prayers on May 15th and begin an uprising. In a letter to Facebook, founder Mark Zuckerberg, the Israeli cabinet minister says the page includes calls to kill Jews and liberate Jerusalem through violence, and that violates Facebook content regulations, he says. A Long Island college has made learning about green careers that help save the environment fun. New York Institute of Technology recently sent its career cab out on the road. And as Elsa Gillis reports, students are rewarded for knowing the right answers to questions about energy and conservation. Two hot topics making headlines lately are green energy and career opportunities. And the New York Institute of Technology has entered in on the discussion. Inspired by the popular game show Cash Cab on the Discovery Channel, NYIT has created the Career Cab. The Career Cab is a green initiative on campus that is helping us promote the um, All Majors Job and Internship Fair coming up on April 7th. Uh, we're using it to drive around campus. When students are picked up by the solar hybrid car, they're asked questions about green energy and technology, career services, and electric vehicles. For every question they answer correctly, they're entered into a raffle to win a netbook computer. What we're doing here is we're bringing an awareness and an education for the students regarding green energy and technology. The Career Cab teaches students about green jobs, green energy, environmental technology, and career services on campus in a creative way. And leaders of the initiative that we spoke with say why doing something like this is so important for students. Students need to know that there are opportunities out there. We think that's really important that they start to think of these things. The environment that we have now in energy, the price of oil. And May Bloom says environmental change may come from initiatives like this. In order to create the paradigm shift that we need to in this country, we need to have an affiliation with educators, students, employers, and uh, government agencies to really create that shift. In Old Westbury, Elsa Gillis, LI News Tonight. Four men have been arrested in Suffolk County in connection with two armed robberies within a half hour of each other. The first was last night around 8.30 when the four, armed with a rifle, approached the victim at Pulaski Road and First Avenue in Huntington Station, demanded cash, then drove off. Then about 20 minutes later, the four pointed guns at two workers at a gas station on New York Avenue in Huntington, demanded money, then fled. A description of their car was broadcast and two officers spotted it in front of an address on Sexton Court with the four suspects nearby. The four teenage suspects have all been charged with robbery. A New York City firefighter is upset over an ad that shows him holding an image of the destroyed World Trade Center towers with the words, I was there. Robert Kelly says he wasn't at Ground Zero and thought he was posing for a fire prevention ad. He told the New York Post that the photo was altered. He says it makes him look like he's trying to cash in on 9-11 and is an insult to victims' families. A small disclaimer says the picture firefighter is an actor. The ad appeared on a flyer at a World Police Fire Games fundraiser and was made for a law firm specializing in 9-11 lawsuits. The company says the model signed a release for the photo. Well, we had a mostly sunny day today, but it was cold. Today's high was only in the mid-40s. Tonight, clear skies with a low down around 30. Tomorrow, another sunny day with a high up near 50. Wednesday, mostly cloudy with a high around 50. Thursday, there's a chance of showers with a high around 50. And the outlook for Friday, a mix of rain and snow with a high around 40 degrees. And that's it for NYIT's LI News Tonight. I'm Ken Eckhart. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow. Have a good night.